So, all right, so we're going to start off here with the scrotum, all right? Now, the scrotum, simply put, is a thin sack of tissue, all right? Now, what the scrotum does not do is it does not provide any protection. Guys, support me in this. When you've, when you've been hit, kicked, fell on your bike, you know, that middle bar on your bike or fallen on your keys or any of that kind of stuff, did the scrotum help protect them? No, not at all. Okay, so the scrotum doesn't protect us from anything. What the scrotum's job primarily is, is to regulate the temperature of the testes, all right? Inside the scrotum, you have two testes, and the testes is the, the sexual gland, okay? So in order for the testes to produce sperm cells, the optimum temperature is somewhere around 96 degrees, okay? So what the scrotum does is it adjusts the position of the testes to the body so it can help regulate the temperature. All right. Now, guys, you'll notice if you jump into a cold lake or pool, some changes happen there, don't they? All of a sudden, the, the scrotum will basically tighten up and it will pull the testes into the body cavity. Depending on how cold it is, they may go all the way in the body cavity. Okay. Now, what it's trying to do is it's trying to get the, the temperature regulated because it's cold outside. Or the environment is cold. All right. Now, reversely guys out mowing the lawn in mid-August, 98 degrees with 100% humidity, and they're out mowing the lawn, and, okay, you get a little bit of what they call stickage, because the scrotum hangs further away from the body, okay, trying to get the testes away from the body heat as best as possible to keep that 96 degrees, all right, about stickage, you jump into a cold pool, we call that shrinkage. And then if you wear the shorty shorts, you get peakage, and that's just no good for anybody. <laughs> Come on, folks. There's some funny stuff that happens with the male system. All right. So that's the scrotum. Scrotum's main job, temperature regulation. Okay? So going to the testes, the testes have two jobs. One, sperm cell production. We talked about that. Um, all the sperm cells that guys are going to produce are going to happen right here. Okay? We produce about 50,000 a minute in the testes. We produce a lot of sperm cells. And guys will start to produce sperm cells when they hit puberty, which is somewhere between 10 to 12 years old. We'll start producing sperm cells, okay? Once we start producing sperm cells, we'll produce sperm cells the rest of our lives, all right? So we just keep going. Nothing really changes with that, all right? Now, the testes have another job, all right? The other job of the testes is to maintain or to regulate a hormone called testosterone, all right? And that hormone testosterone does a couple different things. All right. One, testosterone is what gives men their manly characteristics, the deeper voice, the coarse facial hair, coarse body hair, uh, the big blocky muscles, the broad shoulders, the narrow waist, all that kind of stuff, and the narrow hips. That's all testosterone. It's called secondary sexual characteristics. Okay. The other thing that testosterone does is it regulates the whole sperm cell production inside the testes. So it's up to testosterone to regulate that whole production of those cells. All right. Carl. Oh, vasectomy? Vasectomy is just basically tying or cutting the tubes up here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you still produce sperm cells. We'll talk about how that's going to work here in a little bit. So hang on to that. That was my question. I was wondering, Same like, thing? Like I said, I was wondering, like, oh, your, oh, what happened to your uh, testosterone? Okay, that's a good question, too. And we'll get into we'll get into more vasectomy stuff when we talk about contraception. But um, basically, what a vasectomy is is when they go in and they basically take a section of the vas deferens. We'll talk about that here in a second, and they cut it. So all that does is it doesn't allow the sperm cells to get out. They can't they can't travel outside the body. It doesn't change anything for the hormones because the hormones are regulated by the gland. So the only way you're going to get rid of testosterone is to get rid of the gland, and that's called castration. And that's a whole other animal. They do this. They do this like in farm animals all the time. That helps calm it. Like when your dog gets neutered, okay? That's what they're doing is they're removing the testes, which removes the testosterone, which calms the dogs down. They don't get as aggressive. They don't have the the, the desire to breed and all that kind of stuff. Um, so that's so that's what castration is. We don't typically do that to human beings. Um, but vasectomy, we're just cutting the tube so that the sperm cells can't get out. So it doesn't affect the hormones at all. So, good question. All right. So, the two jobs of the testes, just to review, produce sperm cells, regulate testosterone. Okay? 
and the testes are located inside the scrotum. The scrotum is a temperature regulator. All right. Next up, we have this thing called the epididymis. The epididymis is a structure right here on the outside of the testis itself. The epididymis's job is it's a storage tank. It's basically where sperm cells mature. All right. So most of us are familiar with a sperm cell. It looks something like this. Right? Does this look familiar? Yeah. Okay, when we've seen a picture of a sperm cell, that's what it looks like, okay? And, and it's accurate to say this is a sperm cell. However, in the testes, right here, all the genetic material, DNA, okay, this little cell right here is what's being produced in the testy. Just this part right here, okay? When it goes into the epididymis, it gets the rest of this put on. Okay, the body, the tail, all that kind of stuff. That's what happens in the epididymis. It's almost like um, in a car manufacturing place, like GM, for example. Okay, basically you got a sperm cell goes down the line and keeps getting things added to it and added to it and added to it until you got the finished product, and then it basically goes in the parking lot until someone orders it and then it gets shipped out. And that's kind of like what's going on here. All right, is that sperm cell just keeps getting stuff added to it and added to it. And, and that all happens in between the testes and the epididymis, all right? Now, the, the, the cells are going to stay in the epididymis until they're needed, all right? We have about a 48-hour turnover rate, which means if the sperm cells aren't used within 48 hours, then new ones are going to replace them, the old ones die off and get reabsorbed, all right? So there's a constant turnover rate. And there's, there's a bunch of things that will basically uh, help that turnover rate happen, and we'll explain that as we go through, all right? So, those are the structures that are located in the scrotum itself, testes and the epididymis, all right? Next up, which we talked a little bit about, is the vas deferens, and it's the tube right here. It connects from the epididymis, comes all the way around, and hooks into this structure called the urethra. Now, the urethra has two jobs. It gets rid of liquid waste or urine, and it also gets rid of the semen, which is what the, the fluid that sperm cells are in. Okay, so there's two jobs of the urethra. We'll kind of talk about that as we go through, too. But the vas deferens hooks the epididymis to the urethra. So, typically, there are no sperm cells in the vas deferens until they're needed. For the most part, it's an empty tube. Okay? Now, what stimulates the sperm cells to go to the vas deferens? Okay? Well, that's where we, the penis comes into play. All right? Now, a lot of people put, give the penis a lot of attention in terms of reproduction. All right? And it plays an important role. But in terms of reproduction, the testy plays a much bigger role than the penis does. The penis's job in reproduction is simply to deliver the sperm cells from male to female, from basically from the male to the egg cell, okay? So in a sense, it's like the mailman. And for, for some of you guys, that's a lot more true than others. <laughs> mailman, you know, some of you look a lot like the mailman, maybe? Question mark? <laughs> oh, she got it. She got it. The mailman, okay? So... Basically, that's what the penis's role is. Okay, now inside, inside the penis itself, uh, there are no bones. You notice that? There's no bones. Now, there's a particular nickname that's associated with the penis that's related to bones. Boner. Boner, right? There's no bone in there. Okay, so you don't worry about breaking it or something like. Wouldn't that be weird to put a cast? How would, how would you cast that if that were true? That would be tough. All right, but anyway. It's all made up of muscle tissue and this erectile tissue, okay? Um, and what this erectile tissue is, it's a real spongy tissue that fills up with blood. And when it fills up with blood, the penis grows and gets stiff and erect, all right? See that? That's normal. Stiff and erect. Now, with this term erectile tissue, we get the word... Erection, okay? And all it is is that the, this erectile tissue opens up, blood flows through it, and, and it causes this erection to happen, okay? And it happens for a lot of different reasons, okay? It might be a sexual thought. You like my little sound effect? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to All right. Um, it could be you just woke up in the morning. It could be... I'm really relaxed. It could be 
I'm very bored. So what's going on here? <laughs> Kenny's like, please make it stop. All right. We get approximately anywhere between seven to ten erections a day. All right. Seven to ten, seven to twelve erections a day. All right. Artisties over there like <laughs> I'm halfway there. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Most of the time, most of the time it happens at night. Okay? And research has shown that it typically is to help us keep from rolling out of bed. Get it. Stop That's a kid stand up. Stop, stop it. I'm kidding. That's not true. That's not true. Alright? But guys can get erections for lots of different reasons. You could be sitting in math class, doing math, and all of a sudden. Now, that doesn't mean you really like math, okay? It could mean you're just relaxed. It could mean you had a spike in a hormone. It could mean that you're, you're just daydreaming. It could be you had a sexual thought, okay, or something along those lines. Maybe the girl in front of you is, you know, really attractive. I don't know. But there's lots of reasons this could happen. So it doesn't just tie into sex for a guy to get an erection. Now, when a guy gets an erection, this is, a, this is kind of a, a, a signal to the rest of the body to do some different things. First of all, this is what signals all the sperm cells in the epididymis to travel through the vas deferens. Once a guy gets an erection, the sperm cells flood the vas deferens, and it stops right here at the urethra. All right, so nothing empties into the urethra yet. Okay, because every time a guy gets an erection, does that mean he's going to ejaculate? No, because that would be a big problem if we have 10 to 12 a day, and we, you're going to ejaculate that many. That would be, we would have lots of issues, all right? So, just because a guy gets an erection doesn't mean ejaculation is going to happen, but it does mean that sperm cells flood the vas deferens, okay? Now, again, let's go, let's backtrack a little bit. If a guy has anywhere between 10 to 12 erections a day, are we getting a pretty high turnover rate inside the epididymis? Because all these sperm cells, if they get called on and ejaculation doesn't happen, what happens to them? They die off, and then new ones replace it, new ones replace them in the epididymis. So that's another way that turnover happens inside the epididymis. Okay? So think about that. The next time, guys, you, you experience one of these, just think, oh, I've just got a little turnover going on. A little turnover in the epididymis. Not to get really Isn't there a thing called wet dream or something? Yes. Very good. Nocturnal emissions are what's called a wet dream. What happens then is a guy typically will ejaculate while they're sleeping. And that's another way for the body to to get rid of uh, sperm cells, it could have to do with testosterone. It, some guys have them, some guys don't. Um, sometimes they're related to sexual dreams, sometimes they aren't. Okay? A lot of times guys don't realize it happened until they wake up. And all of a sudden they're like, ooh, <laughs> what's all this? And then you've got to wash the sheets and all that kind of stuff. But it's, like I said, some guys have them, some guys don't. And it typically happens during puberty when you've got hormone levels that are going crazy. Okay? Kenny's over here saying, how do you guys function? She's, she's not getting it. <laughs> All right, so erection happens. Erectile tissue fills up with blood, stimulates the sperm cells to leave the uh, epididymis into the vas deferens and stop right here. There's one more thing that happens. We have this structure here called the Cowper's gland. The Cowper's gland, every time a guy gets an erection, releases fluid from this little tiny gland right here through the urethra. All right, what it does is it coats the urethra because it's real acidic and it protects the sperm cells from the acidic walls of the urethra. Guys will notice sometimes if they have an erection, they'll have a couple drops of this real clear oily fluid at the tip of the penis. That's from the Cowper's gland. That happens every time an erection takes place. All right? It's just a little bit of oily clear fluid. A lot of times they call it pre-ejaculatory fluid because it, because it happens prior to ejaculation taking place. Um, and, uh, and it's basically used as a way to protect the sperm cells. Okay? Now, what happens if a guy gets an erection... Sperm cells flood the vas deferens, Cowper's gland releases its fluid, and sexual stimulation doesn't happen. The penis goes back to its normal state. We already said that the sperm cells die off in the vas deferens, and basically the Cowper's gland fluid, once a guy take, you know, goes to the bathroom or takes a leak, he's going to basically clear all that out. All right? So that's all what's happening with those if ejaculation doesn't take place. Now, we've got two more glands right here. We've got the prostate gland and the seminal vesicle. All right? The prostate gland is about the size of a walnut, and it literally looks kind of like a donut. There's a hole right through the middle of it, and the urethra goes right through it. 
right through the, the middle of that hole. This is why when guys have prostate problems when they get older and their prostate enlarges, what it does is it pinches off the urethra. And this is why guys will have painful urination and stuff because they can't empty their bladder because that prostate is squeezing it shut. All right? And that's why they have to maybe take medications or have surgery or something like that to open that prostate up so that the urethra can, can do what it's supposed to do. Okay? But that's, that's where the prostate's located. All right? The other thing is the seminal vesicle. It's located right next to the vas deferens. These two glands right here produce the sexual fluid we call semen. All right? Semen is the fluid that sperm cells travel through. Now, is there any semen in the testes or the epididymis? No, it's all cells. That's all that's in there are cells. All the liquid, all the fluid is formed in these two glands, and they're way up here. Okay? Um, now, the only time that these are going to release their fluid is during sexual climax. That's what triggers them to secrete the sexual fluid that they possess. Okay? So, what will happen is, erection happens, sperm cells in the vas deferens, Cowper's gland releases its fluid, and we wait. The sexual stimulation is going to take place. Once sexual stimulation takes place, the seminal vesicle and the prostate gland at the climax are going to secrete their fluid into the urethra. At the same time, the vas deferens is going to open up and release the sperm cells into the urethra. So all three of those things mix together in the urethra at the same time. Does that make sense? So we don't have a storage tank that just builds up and builds up and builds up. It's all created on demand as we need it. Okay? And then we ejaculate that fluid out through the penis, all right? And that's the whole process of the sexual climax, all right? Now, how much fluid do these two glands produce in a single ejaculation? It really varies. On average, it's about a tablespoon. So you're talking anywhere from one to three milliliters, okay? It can be as much as five milliliters, all right? It can be more than that, potentially. But on average, you're looking one to three milliliters of fluid. It's not a whole lot, about a tablespoon, that's it. Now, how many sperm cells are present in that tablespoon of fluid? Well, that's a weight. There's not really tons. That's pretty heavy. 2,000 pounds of sperm cells. Ooh. Just kidding. Come on, folks. Work it. How many? How many? What do you think? Throw out a number. James. 30 million? That would be a way low sperm count. Way low. 100 million, that's still a low sperm count. Nah, not, we're not in the billions. But we're close. We're close. 500 million is the low average. It's 500 million to 700 million. 500 million to 700 million sperm cells in a tablespoon of fluid. That's how many sperm cells are present. Now, question, question can get asked. Well, if guys have that many sperm cells, how come girls don't get pregnant more often? We already have a problem with teen pregnancy, over a million pregnant teens a year in the United States, okay? But there's some issues going on with the female system that we have to take into account, too, and we'll get to that next, all right? But because we're producing sperm cells so fast, sometimes the sperm cells aren't, aren't like, they don't swim very good, or they're not complete, or maybe they're deformed, okay? And so you take those out of the equation. And then you got two fallopian tubes. So sometimes the sperm cells are going to pick the wrong tube where there's no egg cell. So you got to take those out of the equation. All right? So let's take, let's go right in the middle. Let's say 600 million. Okay? And let's say 100 million are deformed. Okay? So we take those out of the equation. Now we have 500 million, right? And let's say out of the 500 million that make it through all this other stuff, get into the uterus. Now they got to pick between two tubes. So let's say we go half and half. So that means what? We got five, 500 million. So 250 million go into each tube, okay? So now we're down to 250 million, all right? But how many egg cells are that 250 million looking for? One. Imagine 250 million people looking for you. You think you're going to get found? Yeah. Probably, all right? And that's what makes this such an effective system. But we've got to take into consideration some stuff in the female, and we'll get to that next.